Okay, good morning. Um, this is one of the things I wanted to show you. It's a very quick, easy uh, tutorial. It's about Illustrator. Now, you may be an artist or somebody who sketches a lot and you want to convert these sketches into Illustrator uh, and you want to know what options you have available. So what I'm going to do today is show you three different ways to do the same basic effect. Uh, some are quicker than others and some are um, a little bit more time consuming. So you can choose which one you think is the best and adapt it and change it to the way you feel happy. Okay. Now I'm going to add time differences to each of these uh, variations to show you because I've already got some sketches available. I want to do is to actually tell you the total time it takes to do the sketch and then the clean up and then the conversion so you can understand which is the more time consuming out of the uh, out of the three okay so I'm going to start off this is a normal sketch it has no clean aspects to it some of the lines are crossing like so yep and it's not very good for uh, doing live trace on okay but what it is good for is to be able to use for a way to copy use it as a template uh, to design something the second way, this one, it's been cleaned up on a piece of paper. Everything's nice and crisp and sharp, and it's another way to do an actual uh, conversion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these two ways first, and then I'm going to show you the long way. I'm not going to do the whole picture either. I'm just going to take a section. Let's say, for instance, I'm going to take this section here. Okay, let's find that section on the drawing. Okay, as you can see, there's some lines going across it, so you can't really do this as a live trace. Okay, I'll do the live trace version first. And what you have to do with live trace, obviously, is to sketch your idea and then clean it up like I've done, and then select your picture. Okay, you'll notice if I zoom out, my picture's selected, the bounding box is there. I'm just going to zoom in because it's a good way to test how accurate the line quality is. Okay. Once you've selected your picture, you'll notice this option appears, Live Trace. I tend to go down to the Trace options to customize the uh, process. And the first thing I do is I try to make it so I can see the area that I'm interested in. And then press Preview. Okay. One thing you'll notice when you press preview is a lot of the detail has been lost and this is literally because we've knocked it down to a threshold of 228. Okay. For another thing as well, because it's against white paper, sometimes you may scan something that's not against white. I tend to do this. I clean everything up on layout paper, scan it in and it's against white. You can click this and you may see a little change in some of the line quality. Yeah, it got a little bit thicker. Okay, that can help. Okay, the next thing you can do is look here. Okay, it says it's been scanned in at 150 pixels per square inch. And what you can do is uh, resample this and make it look a little bit more cartoony. Okay, well, that's one thing I tend to do. Before I do that, though, I'm going to ramp up the threshold so it picks more of the black instead of the white to use. I tend to go to around about 180. There's a slider if you click there. You can also type it by hand. Yeah, go to 180, click on a different box to activate it. And what you'll notice is there's more detail appearing in the image. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is you may find certain things start happening. This is quite good actually. There's no um, stepping with the actual scan. It looks like a cartoon image. Okay. Which is good. But one thing I'll tell you because I'm talking about it is uh, you can resample the image. So if you click on this, the less the uh, pixels per square inch is, the better the cartoon effect is going to be. And uh, because uh, screens are sampled at 72 or 73, I'm going to type in 73 and I'll show you what happens if you just keep an eye on the area. Yeah, it becomes more blocky and cartoony. Yeah, which is maybe not what you want, as you see, it's actually distorted quite a lot of mine. But you can scan images up at 600 uh, pixels per square inch or even higher. And what happens is you'll get this stepping effect, which is not necessarily a good thing. Okay, I'm going to knock that back to the original. Okay, which is uh, that shape, and it looks quite nice. So once I'm happy with that, I can trace it. 
okay and then expand it and you've got lots of separate objects okay it's a vector now instead of a picture okay you notice that there's certain things appearing like uh, the edge of the paper appears and you can delete these if you wish like so yep and you can just generally clear it up but it's basically ready for uh, painting okay that's one way of doing uh, a sketch to uh, vector okay the next way a little bit more complicated and I won't do all of it uh, for that reason okay is you've drawn your sketch okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock that layer I'm going to put a layer above it now this is something that's been uh, added to CS5 okay so you can't do this to every uh, version of Illustrator so you have to be careful is that this tool appears uh, it's called the width tool which is a fantastic uh, invention but before I start I'm going to make sure my background is at zero color or negative color transparent and my path is at black okay now I'm going to just to start with I'm going to select the pen tool and I'm just going to create paths like normal following the picture the best I can you don't have to do every single line connected because this is one thing I notice with some people is it they uh, make everything into because it's a path they just keep following clicking if you just press command shift and a it deselects everything whilst you're drawing and what you can do then is to have separated paths which is a good way to show you what I'm going to do next let's see if we can do that without no see I've got to deselect it okay there I can start there all you need to do is just follow the picture with a straight normal path as close as possible like so I'm just going to do so I'm happy with that say for instance I'm just going to show you here quickly with this actually now let's just do that and it doesn't matter which way you start your line as well with this new width tool okay that bit there just follow the curves like so so I'm happy with that because the other bit's too much detail. I just want to make this a quick tutorial. So say for instance we build the entire picture up like this. You can see obviously it's taking time. Okay. Zoom in. Now we select the width tool. Now what happens here is when you roll over any path, it gets gives you the path, but then it gives you this dot appearing. And from that dot you can actually create a, a negative or a positive width. I'm going to show you what happens. Uh, basically you just click and drag either inwards or outwards and it extends the width. So basically it's kind of trying to make it into a... Uh, it's doing a combination of making it into a path and an object at the same time. Okay, you notice it's still a path but it does the same effect as the path. And then maybe you want to do that a little bit wider. Okay, and now you can see the difference between having it as uh, just a normal path with a straight width all the way down it and actually having it have some effect of what a cartoon pencil render would look like which is to have a width at one end and a point at the other end. Now this can work also in middle section so you can do this like so. But one thing you'll notice is it does it on both sides equally. Uh, maybe you want to have it so that uh, let's just undo that. Maybe you want to do it so it's thicker this side and not that side and the way you do this is if you hold down your alt key it basically allows you to pull one direction and not the other okay I never tried the shift but yeah, the shift just doesn't do anything okay and what you can do is also then build up uh, corners you'll notice once you start making these paths you have three dots appearing like so and what you can do is adjust separate elements of that path Okay, you can also move uh, the path still, yeah, and it still retains the width option, like so. And so you can see what you can do is literally build up the entire picture, looking more like a finished uh, cartoon type drawing okay let's just zoom out click on that so you see this has a more kind of a pencil feel and look than these lines these just look like straight 
uh, stroked lines, which is not what you want. Okay. Now I said it does take some time, but let me just zoom in to that section so you can see. You can get a better effect uh, if I zoom in on the same section on here. Yeah, you'll notice that this has these curves. Okay, it has little issues with the way that the lines have jo joined and everything. Whereas that's clean, everything's clean, so it can build a better picture. Okay, so there's two options there. Okay, now the third option I'm going to use, I'm going to go back to my actual scanned image. Uh, actually, now I need to put it all the way back to being just a scanned image. So let me just wait until it's all gone back to an image. Now, literally, this is probably the longest way of doing it. I'm just going to lock the layer again. It helps if you have a really high uh, scanned uh, image as well. This is 150, so that's why it's a bit bitmapped as you're looking at it. But literally, what you do is you make an object instead of a path as you build up the picture. So you literally do this. and you can actually then get the actual effect you want as you draw it, so you create the beziers as you build up your picture like so yep okay now if I just hide that you can see you get the same rough effect as this okay but it does take longer yeah because you've got to draw every single line by hand whereas drawing a path like so and then applying that to it is a lot quicker than actually drawing the actual path itself proportionally but it's still quicker and if you've got a picture like this for instance to build up completely the best thing you can do is literally draw everything as a path okay and then build from that okay by putting the width in and everything saying that there is an option here uh, if I go back to the sketch again, delete this. If we look at the live trace options again, oops, it's locked. Okay, just select the object. There is an option here, instead of making it fills, to make it into strokes. Okay, let's just ignore the white. Okay, I'm going to make this 180 again. Alright, I'm just going to do a preview. What this does is it sees all the lines as stroked objects rather than making them into the thick and thin objects we have before. Like so. And if you notice, lots of things go wrong. Okay. Oops, trace it. There's bits missing. Okay. Th objects have paths going over the top of each other. But basically, it is a stroke. So if I click it, why is it not? Oh, it's because it's not been expanded. Sorry. Look at this; it's terrible. Yep. Yeah, but you notice that they're all strokes. So what you could do, if you wanted to, is to then go through the image and apply the necessary changes with the widths to all the stroke elements. Okay. That's not recommended because it does make your picture look a little bit awful because you've got objects need to be filled in. So there's three, basically four different ways of doing it. Now for quality, I'd recommend this way with the uh, width tool. And I found over the time I've used it, it's a lot quicker in some respects than just scanning it. But if you just wanted to scan a picture that you've already cleaned up, uh, the best approach, as I said, is to make it as high as possible in resolution 600 I tend to do and then drop the resampling down with a bit of testing in the actual uh, use of uh, live trace. Okay, so that's three ways to do the same thing and the times are listed.